Chris, congratulations on making it to the Western Conference Finals. And just wanted to ask about your, your performance and how good it was feeling. And then afterwards, the sharing, sharing so many hugs and emotions on your teammates, Coach Malone, family, the whole bit. Just maybe summarize the whole night for you. Yeah, um, I ain't really had a chance to process it yet. Um, it's a lot of people on that team that I, I'm close to. Uh, Mike Malone is, is one of my favorite people in the world. Ryan Bowen, assistant coach for them, was a teammate of mine in New Orleans. And um, to have my family here, you know, may, always means a lot. Next up is Cam Cox with 12 News, followed by Greg Moore. Hey, Chris, what was that moment like with Monty after the game? You know, he, he talked about kind of enjoying kind of the, the end of the game with you when he wrapped his arm around you. Just what was that like to, to share that with him after kind of everything you guys have been through? It's been a long road for you two to get to this point. Man, uh, it's, it's emotional. You know, uh, Mont has been through um, things in his life, you know, that, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily come back from, you know, the mental stamina. Um, who he is as a person, you know, basketball aside, uh, he means so much to me and my family, you know, so um, to, to be on this journey with him and to see it paying off uh, is nice. And we're, we're a lot alike. We stay locked in. Like, I don't feel good until the buzzer sounds. And, and Mont's, like, Mont's the same way. So, you know, when the series is over and the game is over, it's nice to, um, to, to share those moments. Next up is Greg Moore with the Arizona Republic, followed by Melissa Rowland. Chris, congratulations on the win, man. Uh, Thank you. Greg Moore, Arizona Republic. Hey, man, can you tell me about that that fake spin, pass, back spin? You're coming down the lane. It's about five minutes, 30 seconds left in the third quarter, and you give him that, that fake pass, and it bounces right back up to you. How did you develop that move, and what's the key to doing it? Uh, I started that back in like 2007 when they tried to switch the balls on us, when they tried to switch the basketballs on us and it was like a different material. <laughs> if I could like throw that basketball way out and make it snap and come back to me. And so then when we switched back to the regular basketballs, it just, um, with me, I'm obviously not 6'5", 6'6", not the most athletic or whatnot. So I've always had to, you know, develop my ball handling and, and things like this to, to keep guys off balance. Thank you. No problem. Next up is Melissa Rowland with Fox Sports, followed by Tim Reynolds. Hey, Chris. Um, Monty just told us that you were there for him in the darkest moment of his life, and you were also there for him in one of the greatest moments of his career. What has he meant to you? Man, everything. <laughs> everything. Um, I got a chance to play for, for Monty that one year in New Orleans, and it was a special season. I got some of my greatest relationships with guys off of playing that one year for him. And uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Like, you know, sometimes you have coaches that are just coaches, you know, but sometimes you have relationships that last a lifetime. Mike Malone's on that staff when I played for, for Monty, and Monty is a lot more than a basketball coach, so I appreciate him. Next up is Tim Reynolds with the Associated Press, followed by Greg Mark Schwartz. Chris, congrats on the sweep. I, 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 I don't. I hope this isn't too simplistic, but your your legacy is secure. Your place in history is secure. You're going to end up in Springfield. We all know that. Is it just the one thing at the end that still drives you, or what? Why? How do you still find to? I guess what still brings you to these places where you can pull 37 out of your hat in game four at 36 years old of a closeout game? Like what, what is still the motivation to be this guy for you? Competition. Competition. Like I don't, I don't really play for, for anybody else or whatnot. I play for, for my team, uh, me and Ann, uh, my tissue lady, lightweight, my therapist who always working on me and I talk to all the time about it. Like I, I wasn't this phenom. I wasn't necessarily supposed to be here. I played two years of JV basketball. You know, I, um, it ain't always been, you know, sweet for me. I've always had to grind and I like that mentality. And that's always been who I've been. And I'm gonna stay that way. If you like it, cool. If you don't, it's cool too. Next up is Mark Schwartz from ESPN, followed by Kellen Olson. 
Chris, congratulations on the win. You uh, touched about uh, 10 minutes ago with Chris on the court um, about how people wrote you off just a few years ago. Um, how, 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 what was that feeling like and how has it fueled you to do what you're doing on the court right now and playing some of the best basketball that we've ever seen you play at the age of 36? Uh, it was cool. Um, you know, I, I always say this, I know who I am. I know the type of work that I put in and I'm grateful for my team around me, like my family, my, my uh, chef, Aaron, uh, shoot, uh, Ann, uh, switching over to, to DBC and Donnie and Dave and everybody there at DBC, man. I got an unbelievable team. And then all you gotta do is do the work. You know what I mean? Put the work in and, and it's exciting and, and it's nice to be with a, a, a team um, that everybody has the same mindset. Next up is Kellen Olson with Arizona Sports, followed by Joven Buha. Hey, Chris, I saw you were able to say hi to your family after the game, but also Devin's. Devin couldn't stop smiling when he was talking about seeing the smiles on his family's face. So what is it like for you to see him have these types of moments for the first time in his career that you've had so many times already? Yeah, but it ain't so many times. <laughs> you know, it's my second time in the Western Conference Finals. So uh, it's it's dope. And we still got a, got a long ways to go, but... You know, to see his brother right there, uh, I think his mom and his sister was here. Dad was here at the last game. They, just like my family, been here. You know, they've been with you along this entire journey, and they've seen the work that Book has put in year in and year out, and to see it paying off, I'm, I'm happy for him. Next up is Joe Van Buha with The Athletic, followed by Anthony Slater. Hey, Chris, um, you guys were sixth in, in the regular season in defense rating. You, you've jumped up to second in the postseason. Uh, I'm curious, what type of growth have you seen defensively from the group over the postseason? Man, a lot, a lot of growth. Uh, like I say, it's a shout out to our coaches. We prepared every game. We prepared every game, win or lose. One thing we won't be is we won't be underprepared. And just the attention to detail. You know, we have slip ups here and there, but the signs of a good team is when you can lock in defensively. And that's where we try to hang our hat. Next up is Anthony Slater with The Athletic, followed by Catherine Fitzgerald. Chris, at one point tonight, you hit nine straight mid-range jumpers. Um, I'm, how much was the shoulder bothering you, bothering that mid-range in the Lakers series? When did it start feeling better? And uh, when did that mid-range, when did you feel like you kind of got the touch back on that mid-range? I'm good now. <laughs> Yeah, I'm good now. I don't even remember. I'm good now. <laughs> did it, how much did it affect uh, your mid range uh, when it was bothering you? I don't know. I don't know. We just we got through that series. We we good now. Next up is Catherine Fitzgerald with the Arizona Republic, followed by Richard Sands. Chris, you've touched on so many different emotional levels to tonight with the sweep, getting back to the conference finals, Monty, book your relationships there. Is there one emotion that stands out to you the most or how do you process kind of all those different storylines happening? Uh, I don't know. You just try to stay in the moment. I'm, I mean, my teammates to tell you, it was 18 seconds on the clock. I was still on their ass. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's just the way I am. I, Monty always talks about playoff games and the heartbreaks that you can have. And I, I've been a part of those heartbreaks. Right. So, you know, I'm, I'm not comfortable until the, the clock says zero, zero on it. So um, a lot of things haven't really had time to process it. But, uh, you know, I'm going to get on the bus and first and foremost, call my kids. Our last question of the night is going to be with Richard Sands with 12 News. I like that. That could be a close. Yeah, Chris, congrats on your first ever sweep. You know, Devin talked about you know, how big you've been for him and how much you and Monty have meant to him. How about him to you? How big has he been in this run, getting you back to the Western Conference Finals? How nice has it been for you to kind of get him on this stage and let the rest of the nation see what we have already known here in Phoenix for a while, that Devin Booker's a special talent? I say it all the time, man. If I don't know nothing else, I know basketball. You know, so when um, I saw that Phoenix was an opportunity to, to go come play here, I, I knew what we'd be capable of because I know Book and I know how he competes and the energy that he plays with. Um, it's just dope to see everything that's come together since, 
you know, the trade happened. The day after I got traded, we was in the gym working together, working together. And I think um, that says a lot about why we are where we are right now, it's trust.